During World War II, there were significant elements of resistance inside German-occupied territory. Famously, the French resistance helped to liberate the country, and there were other countries who aided the resistance element. Inside of Holland, there was a significant resistance movement, which grew slowly, initially however they carried out many different attacks against the Germans. They carried out sabotage, counterintelligence, cut communication lines, and handed over information willingly to the Allies. Many members of the resistance were executed for their involvement, once they were captured by the Germans. Today we look at one hero of the Dutch resistance, Hanny Schaft, the girl with the red hair, who was executed by the Nazis. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Hanny Schaft was born Jeanette Joanna Schaft in Haarlem in north of Holland in 1920. Her older sister died in 1927 of diphtheria and after this her parents were very protective over her. Now she was a very politically aware young lady who often spoke about politics and society with those around her and she wished to become a lawyer and specifically one which dealt with human rights cases. She attended university around the age of 18 and was friends with many Jewish students and she from this became sternly against any acts of aggression and persecution against the Jews. Now whilst Hanny was at university, the Germans began to expand their empire as the Second World War took over Europe. The German invasion of the Netherlands began on the 10th of May 1940 and very quickly the Dutch surrendered against the Germans following the bombing of Rotterdam. The royal family left the country to head to London and then the Netherlands were quickly placed under Nazi occupation. As the Second World War progressed, the state of the country deteriorated towards the end of the conflict and there was a great degree of starvation, however the resistance across the country was prominent throughout. Hanny Schaft was asked while at university to swear allegiance to the Nazi government and the occupation and she refused to do this, as did 80% of all students in the country. Because of this she was forced out of the university and then in 1943 she was forced to move back into her house with her mother and father. Her Jewish friends at university were forced to go into hiding for their own safety and at some point Hanny decided to work for the resistance. As mentioned the resistance element began slowly in the Netherlands, however they did help the allied forces during their attempts to liberate the country. If anyone was found helping the resistance, the Germans were brutal and immediately executed those they found out to be helping their enemies. Because of the nature of the country, it was difficult to conceal the resistance activities. For example, there were no mountains to hide inside like the partisans did. They undertook a number of activities including hiding Jews, attacking German groups and also protecting downed allied airmen. Hanny Schaft joined the resistance and she began to contribute with small elements. She started off stealing ID cards for Jews in which they could use these for greater freedoms. She began to steal them from the changing rooms of swimming pools and she also had them forged. When she left university and was forced out she joined a resistance group close to the communist party. She initially wanted to serve the group in a weapons capacity and she wished to help to carry out attacks against the Germans. She worked to carry out different sabotage attacks but she was rather picky with her missions. She was asked at times to kidnap children of the Nazis and she refused to do this on the basis that if she did this the children would be killed. Schaff deemed this to be too inhumane and she drew comparisons between this sort of act and what the Nazis were doing, deeming it to be too evil. The Nazis themselves considered Hanny a terrorist and they sought to execute any member of the resistance. One of her first assignments was to make contact with Truss and Freddy Overstegen who were in hiding. Together the three worked in resistance collecting information about German defences. They continued their resistance stealing weapons and revolvers and Hanny received shooting lessons. Together with another man she carried out an attack on a police captain. The man employed by the Nazi police was known for betraying fellow Dutch people and as he rode past Hanny on his bike she shot him off. The police captain Ragut then fired back towards her friend and hit him, however as he died he revealed a few addresses including Hanny's house to the enemy. She had gone into hiding following the attack but the Nazis took her parents hostage as they began to look for the girl with the red hair, who had also been seen in different sabotage actions against the Nazis. They hoped she would turn herself in but she didn't and her parents were later released. Because of these high profile acts, 
She changed her appearance, dyeing her hair black, and she began to wear glasses, and she began from this point to be known as Hanny. After the death of her accomplice, she was upset but threw herself into more resistance with the Overstegans. She attacked at least eight Nazi collaborators, not all were successful, but she was present in the attacks on three leaders of the local police. During one attack, Hanny was injured and was forced to go into hiding to recover. She continued then to carry out attacks, however things went drastically wrong on the 21st of March 1945. Hanny Schaff was caught with resistance newspapers during a routine stop, and she was caught also with a pistol, and she was taken to a prison in Amsterdam. Whilst in prison she was interrogated and tortured, and after some point she did confess to carrying out a number of attacks, and this confession did save lives as it led to five women being freed. The resistance tried to buy her freedom, and she was told that she wouldn't be shot, however this was not the case. Hanny was taken from her prison cell on the 17th of April 1945 and she left screaming as she knew she was going to face her death. She was put into the back of a car by armed guards and driven to Harlem, where a man with a spade got in the car. The car travelled to some dunes near to Roverin and she was then taken from the car and walked closely to the dunes. It was here where hundreds of people had been executed before. Whilst walking forward, the Dutch Nazi officials followed her, and as she moved forward, one man, Matthaus Schmitz, took out his pistol and at short range, shot her in the back of the head. Somehow though, the bullet only grazed part of her skull, and she turned round to her executioners and said, I shoot better than you, and then another man fired his machine gun into Hanny's shaft. Together the men dug a small and shallow grave and covered her body with sand, but it was done very quickly and to the point where her red hair was still left visible. Inside of these dunes, 422 members of the resistance were executed, and after the war, 421 men and one woman were found, the woman being Hanny's shaft, and she was later reburied. After the war, she was seen as an icon of resistance in the fight against the evils of the Nazi regime, and a number of streets and schools were named after her. At the time of Hanny Schaft's death, she was only just 24 when she was dragged through the dunes and executed, and she died at a time that within a month, Adolf Hitler would also be dead, and the Second World War in Europe would have been over. Hanny Schaff's story is one that is of a defiant young lady, who stood up to one of the most evil regimes the world has ever seen. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.